Hi Diamond Girls, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Devin, and if you are new to my channel, welcome. We are called the Diamond Girls, and we like to talk about celebrity gossip and drama, but we also like to talk about how we can apply what's going on in celebrity news and drama and apply it to our life. We also give advice on relationships, how to improve yourself and your mental health, and overall just becoming a high value woman. So I wanted to come on today and talk about Kiki Palmer and her toxic, unbearable man-child of a boyfriend, Darius Jackson. And what to do when a man is jealous of your success, is insecure, and how to deal with these modern day alpha men. So if you were in your 20s, 30s, or 40s, we've all grew up watching Kiki Palmer. We saw her in Aquila and the Bees. We saw her on Disney Channel. She was on Jump In with Corbin Blue. We've all grew up with her. We all know Kiki Palmer. Well, she recently had a baby in February, a little Aquarius baby, or he might be a Pisces, I'm not sure. But she had a baby in February with Darius Jackson. And their baby's name is Leotis Jackson. That's a cute name. I like it. I can dig it. I can move with it. So Kiki Palmer and Darius Jackson, they kept their relationship kind of private. They've been together since 2021. So they've, they've kept the relationship pretty private and hush hush uh, over the last couple of years as they should. You know, celebrities, sometimes they just put their relationship out on the limelight just for everyone to see Kim Kardashian you know they just put their limelight on everyone you know to see and to judge and stuff so they've kept it pretty quiet they kept it pretty hush hush until now <sighs> I guess there was this Usher show I guess Usher took residency in Las Vegas and he has like this show and Kiki Palmer had gone and she wore this black lacy raunchy outfit it's like a black sheer Givenchy dress and she looks good she looks good she just had a baby you know she she was always like that skinny girl um you know we you know in high school just skinny no boobs no butt and now that she's had a baby and she's going through you know her postpartum and whatnot um she you know she's getting her curve she's looking good i'm, I'm digging it like she, she looks good the girl looks good and if you've ever been that skinny girl in high school which i once was you know as you get older you grow into a woman and you you know you start to grow some boobs you know you're no longer rocking that a cup you know you know you got that cd cup and you know you got a little butt behind you you know you're you're no longer a size two you're now putting in on size six pants you know you're looking good you're looking good so i get it so Kiki, you know, she wants to show off her body. She wants to look sexy and whatnot. You know, she wanted to look good and everyone liked it. Everyone liked it except for her boyfriend. So Mr. Jackson decided to go on Twitter and have a little rant like the man child that he is. And he said, it's the outfit though. You a mom. Nice grammar. Nice grammar, Jackson. We live in a generation where a man of the family doesn't want the wife and mother to his kids to showcase booty cheeks to please others, and he gets told how much of a hater he is, he wrote on Twitter. This is my family and my representation. I have standards and morals to what I believe. I rest my case. You know what I find interesting is so many of these men want to showcase that they're a high value man. I'm a high value man, I'm an alpha man, I'm a leader. But then proceed to go online and have these little toddler rants on social media. Let me tell you something. If your man is scrolling on social media all day long and is not doing anything with their life, they have no hobbies, no ambition, no goals, you are not dealing with a high value alpha man. You're dealing with a man child. So he wants to say, we live in a generation where a man of the family doesn't want the wife and mother to his kids to showcase booty cheeks. Mr. Jackson, what exactly do you mean by wife? Last time I checked, you and Kiki are not married. Her name is Kiki Palmer, not Kiki Jackson. So if you want to talk about traditional, then put a ring on it. Diamond girls, we're called diamond girls for a reason. We expect diamonds. Thank you. <laughs> so Kiki Palmer, she met uh, Mr. Jackson, Darius, at, um, what's his name, Diddy's party. I guess he was throwing a party and she saw him and she thought, oh, he's cute, he's cute. And one of her friends was like, go talk to him, you know, her little, her little wing woman. She's like, go talk to him, go talk to him. So she went to go talk to him. 
and you know they they mingled and whatnot in 2021 and now they're together the only reason why Darius was at Diddy's party not because he was famous who even is this guy it's because his brother is famous his brother is on this show called Insecure and his name is what's his name Sarunas Jackson I don't know his name is Sarunas Jackson he's on Insecure that's how you know that's how Kiki met him he, he's a nobody essentially Darius is a nobody so he was invited because of who his brother was not because he was anyone famous or anyone to talk about or you know the man of the town he was just invited because his brother is famous now if you didn't know this but Darius actually had a girlfriend named Taylor Marie and she found out about this relationship between Kiki and Darius whenever Darius went public and what I find most interesting is Taylor is alleging that three weeks before he went public with him and Kiki's relationship that he was pressuring her to get an abortion. Now, Darius wants to talk about traditional woman, traditional man, traditional families, traditional relationships. But then you turn around, first of all, you have a girlfriend, you cheat on her with Kiki Palmer, and then turn around and force, force accusations, allegedly, force your girlfriend to have an abortion and then turn around and get Kiki pregnant and don't marry her. And you want to talk about traditional? Okay. So anyways, who even is, who even is Darius? He's a nobody. I don't even know who he is. But apparently, you know, he's a fitness instructor. He's a fitness instructor at this place called Inspire Fitness Studio or whatever. He used to play uh, football in college. The average income for a fitness instructor, I believe is like 24,000. Let's assume that he makes a little bit more than that, but the average income is about 24,000. Kiki Palmer's net worth is 10 million. 10 million. So he's living pretty good. He's living, he, so he's living really good, really good, um, you know, for a fitness instructor and marrying a singer, actress, dancer, comedian. So he's living pretty good. He's living really good but then has the audacity to go on Twitter and embarrass her. Have you not embarrassed her enough by not marrying her? You got her pregnant and you still haven't married her yet. And we see this a lot in men these days where, you know, they, they want to get a woman pregnant. They want to build this family, but they don't want to put a ring on it. Yet they still have the audacity to call themselves an alpha male because they think that this is what a woman wants. They want a man who's dominant, a man who is aggressive. So I'm actually going to get into this. I'm actually going to disprove this alpha male trend that is going on that Kevin Samuels started. So let's talk about is an alpha man really what a woman wants? So if you haven't noticed in 2023, there's been a lot of men coming out, you know, with this toxic masculinity mindset and trying to use humiliation as a tool to assert your manhood and your leadership skills as the head of the household. And for me, I am so tired of this alpha male conversation. So an alpha male is basically someone who is very dominant, very aggressive, very powerful. You know, they want to really impose their ideas and sometimes they'll use humiliation to put down women. <laughs> Darius. Alpha versus beta, da, 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 all this stuff, stigma man. You know, it, it, it makes them feel big, it makes them feel strong, they wanna be the man of the house. And alpha men are typically described as real men. In contrast, the beta man is seen as weak, submissive, low status, they're often seen as the nice guy who never gets women. And a lot of these alpha men think that in order to attract a woman, they have to be an alpha man. They have to be dominant, they have to be aggressive. But there was actually a study done and they actually found that neither one of them, neither a beta man or an alpha man is attractive to women. It's actually a prestigious man. So they actually did a study and they asked women, what do you normally look for in a romantic partner? And across four different studies, and I'll link the study below, across four different studies, they found that dominance was more sexually attractive. And that someone who, and a man who is submissive and quiet and shy was actually seen as less attractive. Now, before you get ahead of yourself, hold on. Taken at face value, it looks like, yeah, alpha men, you know, are more attractive to women. Women find them more sexually attractive. But do they find them attractive for long-term romantic partners? Stay tuned. So in this study, about 118 women were asked to complete this study on what traits they prefer in a romantic long-term partner. And they found that they found that only one woman 
and their sample actually identified dominant as one of the traits that she sought out for in a romantic partner. And the two big winners were confident, 72% found that confidence, and 48% found assertive to be an ideal date. Not one woman wanted a demanding man, and only 12% wanted an aggressive person. Now, now, these are all traits of an alpha dominant man, right? You know, you have dominant, you have assertive, you have confident, you have aggressive, and you have demanding. And the two big winners were confident and assertive. Now, for the non-dominant traits, the beta man, typically the traits for these men are easygoing, sensitive, shy, and quiet. And a lot of them, you know, a lot of men think, oh, no one, no woman wants a beta man, no woman wants that. Well, Actually, 68% of women sought out men who were easygoing, 76% sought out men who were sensitive, not one, woman, not one woman wanted a submissive man, and only 4% wanted a quiet man. So while it's tempting to just be like, think very black and white, like, oh, a woman wants an alpha man, a woman wants a beta man, it's not that black and white. A woman wants a prestigious man. A prestigious man has lower levels of aggression, they have pretty high self-esteem, social acceptance, they're very agreeable. So based on this study, it's shown that women tend to want a man who is assertive, confident, easygoing, and sensitive without being aggressive, demanding, dominant, quiet, shy, or submissive. In other words, they want a prestigious man, not a dominant man. So now that we've shed that light of, oh, being an alpha man and being a beta man, Let's talk about these alpha men who are intimidated by your success. Stop letting these alpha men tell you that you need to just sit at home, cook and clean, and not go out. But in that same term, they will go after a woman who is successful, has her career together, and then make her feel guilty for her accomplishments. There are some relationships where one partner just might be more successful than the other, and there are certain relationships where the woman is more successful, and men tend to get intimidated by that. You know what I found so interesting was, this is not the first time that Kiki has just, you know, twerked and shown off her body. And Darius had no problem with it. He had no problem with it. He only had a problem when Usher, a more successful man, a more educated man, was all upon her. So he was intimidated by that because he cannot compete with someone like Usher. But yes, yeah, so these these men, these alpha men, they want to talk about, oh, you know, I want a, a housewife, I want a stay-at-home mom. But in that same breath, did these men have a mama who was staying at home? No, they didn't. You're talking about, oh, I want all this, I want all that, I want a submissive woman, I want a woman who stays at home and cooks and cleans and does all this stuff for me. But then you guys never had that role model. He never had to like, did you have a dad at home? No. It's so funny how these guys, they want to, you know, they, they, they grew up in a single parent household, but then all of a sudden they want to place these rules and regulations onto women when your mom was literally a single mom. Really. Listen, for me, I would consider myself to be a conservative woman to some degree. You know, I have a very, you know, I, I grew up in Texas. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty conservative mindset. But I just find it so interesting how these men you know, him talking about traditional this, traditional that, and then allegedly forces his girlfriend Taylor to get an abortion. Typically conservatives go against that notion. People who have more of a traditional mindset go against, go against that notion. Um, but because it didn't benefit you, you want to go against that. Okay, cool. So let's talk about what to do when you are in a relationship with a man who is intimidated by your success or is jealous of your success. So I find it interesting because who was Darius before he met Kiki? Who was he? A nobody. He was a football player in college and he's a fitness coach now. He was a no one. No one knew about him. The thing about insecure men when they're with a confident, successful woman is oftentimes whenever you are, you know, you're doing your thing, you're getting all this attention from men, from women, you're getting all this clout, oftentimes they will want to draw attention to themselves. You know, Kiki, you know, she prides herself on keeping her relationship private. But now that Kiki is getting all of this attention, he all of a sudden wants to go on Twitter and go on this rant like a toddler because he wants attention too. He's like, look at me. Hello, guys. I'm here too. I'm her boyfriend. I'm her baby daddy. No one cares about you, Darius. No one cares about you. Who are you? 
So he wants to draw attention to himself and he becomes jealous of you and he's trying to compete with you. He's trying to compete with you. He's not on your level, baby girl. And the reason why he does that is because he feels as if his accomplishments are not as good as yours. And he'll never be able to tell you this. If you're bringing home more money than him and you're the one paying the bills and calling the shots and you're like, no, we can't afford that car. You tell him, no, he can't buy this. He can't buy that. You're messing with his manhood. So he's like, well, I'm great too. I'm a fitness coach trying to get on your level. And he wants the attention because he's insecure. But essentially, Darius, he made this about more so his ego than about herself. She just had a child a couple months ago. You know, he's not thinking about all of these things that she could be going through, this postpartum depression, you know, her body's changing. And he can call her beautiful all day long, but she has to feel that within herself. So he made this more about his ego. And that's the thing about men who are intimidated by a woman's success, is he's making it more about himself than what you've accomplished. The thing about envy is there's three different types of envy. There's depressive envy, which can look like, I feel like a loser compared to her. There's hostile envy where I think she manipulated her way up to the top and then there's and there's benign envy which is that's impressive so here's an example of them depressive envy is like when someone you know does better than you and, it, it, and that can often translate to feeling like oh they're better than me I'm a loser compared to her I'm inferior I'm a failure and you think that their success reflects your failures. And then there's hostile envy where it's, I think she manipulated her way up because you resent this other person and you want them to essentially fail because you feel like they had to do something crazy in order to get to the top. This person might enjoy successful people getting divorced or arrested or having accidents. And oftentimes we feel better because we feel as if we, you know, we both have lost. And then there's benign envy. This is kind of like a neutral envy. You kind of observe this person, you're really impressed by their success, and you basically admire them and you give them credit for it. I feel like Darius is more on the hostile envy because he feels as if, oh, well, if Kiki can go on and embarrass me and twerk all over Usher, then I'm gonna go on Twitter and embarrass her. Now we're both going down. Because remember, someone who is hostile, they enjoy seeing successful people fall feels better, we feel better knowing that we both have lost. And by her going out and being success the successful woman that she is, that hurts his fragile male ego. You know, this alpha man that he claims to be, this traditional man. Another sign that you are with a man who is intimidated by your success is he will nitpick your flaws. We all have friends like that where, oh girl, you're really wearing that shirt today? Okay. I would never wear something like that, but it's cute, I guess. You know, he wants to nitpick your flaws. And you know what I found most interesting about Darius is you never really hear him talking about how great Kiki is and how amazing she is and all this other stuff. He only wanted to point out her flaws and the things that she wasn't doing right because he felt embarrassed. And that's the thing about insecure men who are intimidated by your success. They only want to point out your flaws. They can know, they can never say anything nice to you. They don't they don't want to see you get praise. They don't want to see you be happy. They don't want to see you be successful. They want to bring you down to their level. They don't want to celebrate your big wins. I had a boyfriend back in high school. He's my ex now, thank God. Ugh. But back when we were dating, there was this person who came up to me. There was complimenting me like, oh, you're so pretty, da 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 da. And I was like, thank you. And he said, don't compliment her. It's going to make her head bigger than it already is. And what I find most interesting about that is he was actually a, a football player in college and now he's a fitness coach. So very similar to Darius, so I know how these guys are. But they only want to point out your flaws. He was always pointing out my flaws, but never talked about how, you know, the good things about me. They don't want to celebrate your big wins. You know, let's say you come home and you're like, babe, I just got a promotion at work. And he's like, oh yeah, that's, that's great. That's awesome. He's not going to be excited for your accomplishments and your major milestones in life. Another sign that you are dealing with a man who is insecure and intimidated by your success is he gossips about you behind your back. Because the thing about these people is they don't want you to succeed because they want this success. He wants this success for himself. So he will gossip about you to others in order to make himself feel superior. And a lot of what he says is there to just basically tear you down and to make you look like less of a person to these other people. And he's going to try to ruin your reputation. Because the thing is about these 
you know, self-proclaimed, self-diagnosed alpha men is they're really insecure. They're just really insecure men. And they need to make it seem as if, and they want to tear women down in order to feel superior. But here's the thing, as long as you know your worth, you don't need to be concerned about the rumors that these men are spreading about you. You know, these men, they want to talk about, oh, you know, why does she wear so much makeup? She needs to not wear all this makeup. I wore lashes on this video for a reason, because these men, they just love to talk about, oh, she's wearing fake hair, she's wearing fake lashes. Oh, shoot, I'll wear these lashes. I'm like, <laughs> why are you worried about what's in my makeup bag, first of all? And these men, they want to talk about, oh, you know, they'll go off and marry some plain Jane and then turn around and cheat on you with some Instagram model who looks like me. <laughs> Think about that. Another thing that you are deal another sign that you are dealing with a man who is insecure is he rarely encourages your goals. So if you are this, you know, this type of person who likes to dream big, you have ambition, you have goals, because your partner is jealous of your success, he's not going to encourage you to dream bigger. He in fact, he's actually going to discourage you and come up with every single reason for you not to accomplish them. Oh, you have to stay home and take care of the kids. You have to be a traditional wife. You don't need to be doing all that. So he's going to diminish the goals that you have for yourself. And then once you, you know, you're, you're, let's say you're going to law school and you decide to drop out so you can be a stay-at-home mom and take care of the kids. And then next thing you know, he's gonna throw it back in your face that you're riding on his income. To me, a man who asks his woman, to ask his wife to stay home and take care of the kids and be a housewife, and then five, 10 years later, throw it back in her face that, you know, oh, you're riding on my income, you are the worst type of man. You are literally the worst type of man because she literally just gave up her entire life to stay at home and take care of the kids and is no longer focusing on her goals and ambition and you want to sit up there and talk about, oh, you're riding on my income. You wouldn't be here if it wasn't for me. You are the worst type of man. The worst. I mean, of course, you know, you have like Hitler and whatnot, you know, they're pretty bad. But if you throw that back in your wife's face, that she wouldn't be here without you and that she's riding on your income, you are the worst type of man. So if you are in a relationship with someone who is intimidated by your success and you still wanna make it work, you still, you know, you still wanna make it work with this guy, you don't wanna get a divorce, you, wanna break, you don't wanna break up, so you still wanna make it work. <sighs> Sit down with them and what I don't want you to do is get defensive. You're jealous of my success, you're de jealous of my promotion, you're jealous that I make more money than you, you know, get really, don't, getting really defensive. You know, don't tell them like, oh, you shouldn't feel this way. Validate their feelings. Get, sit in your feminine energy. Don't tell them it's oh it's your problem that you feel this way. You're just insecure, and don't try to like diminish or minimize their success. But instead, get yourself centered in love. The thing about a person who is jealous of you and intimidated by your success, a lot of times it's not that they don't want you to be successful. It's just they're afraid that they're going to lose you. They're telling you that they are afraid. They're afraid that they're not good enough. They're afraid that they're inadequate. They're, they're afraid, there, there's something that they're afraid of. That means you have to hold them down in love. So before speaking to your partner, get yourself centered and tell yourself, I am going to be loving and kind and sit down and speak with them and get to the root of the problem of why they're jealous. And I'm telling you, it's because they're afraid. They're afraid they're gonna lose you. The thing about Darius is he wasn't jealous, you know, and upset when she was you know, twerking and wearing revealing clothing, he was jealous because she started doing it with Usher, a man who is of higher power than her, than him. You can't compete with him. So he's afraid that he's going to lose her. She's getting this big, beautiful body. You know, all these, you know, more people are looking at her. She's successful. She has way more money than him. He's afraid he's going to lose her. So get yourself grounded in love. Do not go into this conversation ready to battle and everything that you're going to say. Sit down, open yourself up, and be ready to listen. And truly listen to them. Don't listen to respond, truly listen to the words that they are saying. Because, think about it, if you had a child or a good friend who was afraid of something, would you shame at them and get defensive, like, why are you scared? No, you wouldn't. Jealousy is about the other person, not about you. I'll say it again. Jealousy is about the other person, not about you. Unless you're purposely doing something to make them jealous, your partner's jealousy is not about you. Jealousy is a feared-based emotion. It's not about love, it's about that they're afraid of losing you. Because, you know, if she gets this promotion, then that means that 
she's gonna come across better more successful men and I'm gonna lose her so if you do not address this fear with compassion and love it's just going to keep getting worse so your job in this conversation is not really to defend yourself it's to focus on the content of what they're saying so what you want to do is keep coming back to their feelings and not this whole he said she said okay babe so what you're telling me is is that Whenever I am out late for work all the time, you feel as if I'm not prioritizing our relationship. Is that correct? Because ask yourself, is your goal in this to win the arguments or peace? Peace or victory? Which one do you want? Don't allow this conversation to focus on the past. Focus on the future. Where do you want to go together? What are your goals as a couple and how will you get there? Don't allow your emotions to get in the way of it and get really defensive. Just sit back and listen. And if they start getting really defensive and loud with you, you never are home, da 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 da, you think you're better than me. Data point. Data point. For you. Data point. You have now realized that you are dealing with a man who is so insecure that they are not able to have a mature adult conversation. And it is at that, and it is at that point that you need to realize it is time to let this relationship go or go to therapy. Okay. Well, that's all for today, guys. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Do not forget to like, subscribe, and comment, my diamond girls. I love you guys so much, and with love.